Known as the queen of the Nürburgring, Sabine Schmitz is famous for offering white-knuckle passenger rides around the world's scariest track. She also races there as part of the tough VLN Endurance Championship. Ooh, this was good! Today, she's joining me at Cadwell Park in Lincolnshire, England, a twisty, hilly track known as the Mini Nürburgring. We're finding out if the Porsche 911 can keep its title as our favourite sports coupe by pitting it against its newest rival, the mighty BMW M6. Sabine has raced both BMWs and Porsches, so she's the perfect testing companion. So, Sabine, we've got the finest Porsche 911 ever built and the most powerful BMW coupe they've ever made. Which would you prefer before we drive them? Yeah, well, Tiff, I would say the Porsche will be the quickest, but the conditions are very tricky, so the BMW is very, very powerful, and I think the balance is easier to handle today. I'm going to take the BMW. You're the lady. The choice is yours. Oh, Sabine. thank you so much. The most important skill of any sports coupe is the ability to corner quickly. Test one will see which car has best mastered the art. Using GPS timing gear, we'll see who can hold the highest minimum speed through this fast right-hander. The minimum speed is what a car has to slow down to in order to take a corner safely. The higher it is, the more grip a car has. We'll do one run with the electronic stability control switched on and one with it off to find out if the car's driver aids can make them faster as well as safer. OK, Tiff, now I put this ship into race mode. <laughs> it was really, really fast. When I start to lift off, I had wheel spin already, so the torque is very, very high. For the first run, we're going to see what you can do with traction on, are you? Yeah, it's on. With a bit of a sus suspension on a proper race mode. This is called Charlie. It's a proper English name for a corner, that's a bit. In watching the V-Box 60. The technique to get a corner quickly in the BMW is try not to have understeer when you turn in because it's such a heavy car. Oh, there's a bit of what's that correcting going on? Oh my, yeah. About 65, 66. Oh, that's bad. With the stability control on, the BMW manages 65.2 miles an hour. But Sabine could feel the brakes being applied as the car's electronic brain tried to prevent it going out of control. Did you feel the traction interrupting there yeah, or not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I switched that rubbish off. Whoa. It's not rubbish, <laughs> it's life-saving stuff. You'd never know, but for a track use. We're on the racetrack. <laughs> Let's see if the car will go faster with Sabine free of any electronic interference. Come on, Sabine. Yeah. Last lap of the race, there's a pack of cars behind you. You've got to get into that corner as quick as you can. Up the hill to Charlie. Any... Turning in the Charlie. Well, honestly, I don't want to. Honestly, yeah. Just over 70 miles an hour. Now carry the speed, carry the speed, carry the speed. 68, 66. I always have 70. That's on your head up display. This is what counts. I'm sorry, oh, that is the adjudicator. It was about 66. It changes very fast. I'm not quite sure the exact number. We'll check it back. Sabine does go faster with the electronics switched off. 66.2 miles an hour. 67. No. Go on. Go and get the Porsche. The BMW's main issue is understeer, with the front wheels losing grip first. I'm worried the Porsche will suffer the same problem. Thanks to its rear-mounted engine, the 911 has a lighter nose than the front-engine BMW, a recipe for even more understeer. So, as with you, I'm going to leave the um, stability control on the PASM. Now, being a lot lighter, this should suit the Porsche. Oh, uh, I feel it has grip like hell, not Over like the mine. Drop in PASM work. Oh, 75. Oh, that's not fair. The Porsche has much more overall grip and scores 75 miles an hour with the electronics switched on. It immediately felt better than the BMW, but it did suffer from understeer when just trying to push it in as quick as you can. But being lighter and more nimble, it was it adjusted its line easier than the big BMW. I'm going to switch the stability off to 
improve. I can go even faster, obviously. Ah, I think no. Using my wonderful no. skills. You are too old to drive without. Two <laughs> starts. Bad enough with that Jason <laughs> potato. OK, now, Tim, go for it. <laughs> I want to see you an eight in front. <laughs> <laughs> the test was not but, the exit. What was the speed? Uh, I was too afraid to watch, but I <laughs> might be 78. <laughs> In fact, it was 78.2 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour quicker than the BMW. But as expected, it's the front wheels that let go first. If I could improve the Porsche, I'd just make it turn in a bit better. It just understeers that frustrating amount and you can't get on the power as strong as you'd like to early in the corners. But that's not the end of this test. The previously damp track is now dry. Well, it is a bit drier. We'll go... Yeah, it's totally dry. I had okay, the look, track underwater. We'll go out on the BMW now and just check what the speed can yeah. do. Yeah. So we give Sabine and the BMW a chance to improve on the grippier surface. The result, 75.3 miles an hour. Better, but still not as good as the Porsche. The result was fair because the Porsche, it's a race machine, you know? That looked like a big gap at first. It was only about two or three miles an hour in the end. Round one to the 911. Unfortunately, our off-road test turned into more of a test of Victoria's nerves than the actual capability of the car. I can't, I can't believe our schedule. <laughs> we tested the car! I know! <laughs> Are you ready? You could get a London bus in that gap he's left. OK, here we go. Oh, go on, Johnny. Can you do a handbrake turn? Oh! oh. Yeah. I got the thing round. I was pleased. Mine was quite neat. That was in.